Welcome to 10 TV Plus. My name is Dylan Rubbershot alongside meteorologist Michael Barons. We got a jam packed show for you guys out there today. We have had our hands full this oh, week. Oh huh? boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has been a mess throughout this morning. I mean, we had the snow yesterday, we had the black ice today crashes out there. I mean, I was out in the field uh, in the cold and it was slippery out there it, at times. Mother Nature kind of behaved with what we thought would happen though. I yeah. mean, a week out, the models were showing the chance for some wintry precipitation this week and that's kind of what happened. Yeah, I mean, and, and leading into today, people were asking us why the weather impact day for Friday? The snow's gone. What well, was that ice like we were telling you all week long? That was the problem, and that played out um, exactly as expected. Luckily, many of you had a couple of dry hours yesterday afternoon, so that kind of gave yeah. the roads time to kind of dry out. <laughs> uh, but southwest of the metro area, we did have a couple of slick spots out there. So Definitely did. Things are improving. All right, let's get right into the details, and we are going to be warming up this afternoon. If you are watching this right now, we are finally above freezing, so we are on the mend, right? Low 40s out there as we head into the afternoon, into the evening hours. If you are heading off to any high school first and 10 football games, just dress accordingly. Because, I mean, you look at these numbers, upper 30s, lower 40s, it's still going to be cold out there. And then as we head towards this evening, I will continue to warm on up. A little bit of wind out there, too. Maybe not as bad as what we saw over the last couple of days, but we're talking 25, 30 miles per hour wind gusts out there. It's going to be quite blustery out there. All right, let's get the clock to a more current time because it is Friday afternoon. You can see that we do have some showers moving in this afternoon. Most of this is going to be very light. Now, the initial onset, you might get a snowflake or two that kind of mixes in. Generally speaking, I'm expecting this to be mostly uh, liquid and instead of frozen heading into today. And then as we head towards four o'clock in the evening, you'll notice that we get this nice band of rain moving in from the north to the south. Who is looking at rain at four o'clock? If you live east of 71, there's a pretty good bet you'll be getting showers where you live. If you live west of 71, I'm pretty optimistic that we stay dry. But this is as we start heading off to those high school football matchups and we are tracking some showers out there. But again, like I said, these showers hug the eastern counties in the viewing area. So if you live in Athens, if you live in Caldwell, if you live out in Cambridge, you'll be looking at your fair share of showers and then eventually things do improve as we start kind of kicking this on out of here. Rainfall amounts very low. If you do get any showers, we're talking under a tenth of an inch, most likely maybe a few one hundredths of an inch. That is pretty much it heading into this afternoon. Now, as we look outside over the next week or so, the average high is 50. This horizontal line right here shows that average temperature. Look here at Monday. I mean, we're knocking on the door of 60 as we begin next week. But then look at this, 44 appears to be a very popular number. The temperatures drop back down just in time for the Thanksgiving holiday. So we'll talk more about the holiday coming up in just a bit. Frost and freeze, not tomorrow. It's going to be too warm out there in the morning hours. But then a frost could be possible here on Sunday morning as we get down to the middle end of the 30s. Remember, you don't actually have to get down to 32 degrees in order to get a frost. But we will be looking at temperatures eventually getting down below freezing, which is where you could be looking at a freeze. When? Wednesday. So that's getting closer to Thanksgiving. And then we're looking at several days next week where the temperatures do get cold enough that we could be in freeze territory. So just I want to give you the heads up on that. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it will be on the cold side heading into next week. Next 12 hours go like this. We're looking at clouds today, looking at showers, lots and lots of clouds out there on the forecast for today. Temperatures cruising up to the middle and upper 40s as we head into the afternoon. Luckily, as the sun goes down, we shouldn't be looking at quite as much wind. But as we look at those high school football games, it is cloudy, dreary, and we will be looking at a few showers moving into the region. The weekend is almost here. Saturday, we're looking at temperatures in the upper end of the 40s. Sunday, 54. My pick of the weekend, Sunday. Why? You're going to get more sunshine. Temperatures will be a little bit Warmer out here by the later half of the weekend. Time for the Buckeyes game. Tailgating tomorrow. Ouch. 41. Yeah, it's cold. Upper 40s here by the final score. And remember, if you're sitting in these seats, sometimes depending on exactly where you're sitting, the wind can kind of funnel into the stadium. So dress for temperatures that will probably realistically feel like the upper end of the 30s. That's my advice if you are heading off to the game tomorrow. We are dry Saturday and Sunday. And in fact, that is... The good news with the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, we completely took the rain out. Monday, on the other hand, that could be a little bit iffy, tracking some heavy rain as we go back to work at school as we start next week. 
Let's talk about what we can expect heading into the future. And I do want to take this time to give you a quick update on the drought monitor. Folks, we have made so much progress over the last week. So, so much progress. This is last week's monitor on the left and I'll step out of the way and take a look at that progress on the right. We've eradicated much of that severe drought. And in fact, all areas to our north have gone from a severe drought to a moderate drought. And as we look at the numbers, let's break it down a little bit more. 35% of Ohio has a severe drought. Okay, that's not ideal. That's about a third of the state, but that's down 14% from last week. And with a soggy pattern underway, we expect long-term drought improvement to continue as we head into the next seven days. So that is some good news. And this is why the Climate Prediction Center's six to 10 day outlook, look at all the green on the map as we're gonna be looking at some good rainfall on the way. Let's get a look here at that seven day forecast and heading into Monday, we warm up and we have our next system underway. You'll notice that we have a lot of green showing up here on the map. And as we head through Monday afternoon, Monday evening, this is gonna be just rain. We're not gonna be looking at any snow mixing in. I wanna take your attention though to Thanksgiving as we could be looking at our next system rolling into the area on Thanksgiving day. Look here, we have a low pressure system moving in across the Ohio Valley. On, during its onset, we have cold air out ahead of that low. And so as that moisture comes in from the Gulf of Mexico, it's gonna kind of converge with that cold air out ahead of it. And so the pink on the map, that is not snow. That could be sleet, could possibly be freezing rain. This is one model run. It's still six days away. Things likely will change between now and then. Just wanna give you that heads up as we could be looking at that system rolling into the area. Nonetheless, as we head towards the end of next week, you can see that snow icon on Thursday, looking at a few flakes possibly mixing in with that rain. We'll be dropping down to the middle end of the 40s here as we head towards late next week. So we are gonna be looking at some changes underway, but as we head towards Thanksgiving, Michael, I know a lot of people yeah. will be hitting the roadways and getting ready to travel. And you know, hopefully they get that travel in before Thanksgiving, because depending on how that Thanksgiving system goes, if it errors more toward the winter side, those last minute travel plans, maybe those local holidays here in Ohio, that could get a little bit tricky on and there. And especially not even if you're, you may not be necessarily traveling here. If you're traveling inter interstate somewhere else, yeah. Chicago, Illinois, or even off towards West Virginia, the mountains could definitely be impacted. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you know, those higher elevations, we get those colder air up in the atmosphere. We force that moisture up in the atmosphere. They got hit hard with this system. It could come again. All right. Yeah. All right, time now to <laughs> move on today. We've seen a lot of changes to the weather lately, and you have uh, an explainer for us today. Yes, yeah, so today we were tracking the roads earlier in the morning. Good news for the afternoon. I want to show you the road temperatures, how we've changed things since this morning. We had roads that were down in the 30s this morning, very cold conditions. Those have moved up into the 40s as we headed into the midday. And even though we may have a few flakes that fall throughout the afternoon from some residual moisture pushing through, we're not going to see the dangerous ice potential that we had out there this morning, thanks to those road surfaces now being above freezing. Like we were saying, though, it was the untreated road surfaces that caused problems this morning, and that was with the ice. So I do want to go ahead and take a quick look at that. The ice out there forming, of course, as temperatures fall, the water molecules that are usually more spread out kind of condense together and they form that icy patch out there on the road as we hit 32 or below. And of course, when you drive over those areas of ice, you are certainly prone to lose traction. That black ice out there, you're not going to see it until you're already on top of it and you end up kind of like this guy here, losing control and skidding around from time to time. The way we combat those icy conditions is, of course, to add salt to those roadways. What salt actually does, pretend those big yellow dots there are salt molecules put into that water uh, we showed you earlier. It kind of breaks up the ability for that water to condense and freeze into a solid. These big areas of salt get in the way. They stop that uh, area of water from turning into ice, and it can make quite a difference out there. The regular freezing point of water on those roadways is about 32 degrees, as we were talking about. You put the salt on top of it, and we can get things uh, to about 15 degrees. That's a great improvement. Uh, the salted roads this morning were not a problem because uh, we were looking at the temperatures. We weren't anywhere close to 15 this morning. So if you were salted, you were good. If you were unsalted, well, we kind of saw the results. 
And as we uh, look here at the next couple of days, obviously, you know, we're lucky that we didn't see quite as much snowfall because that too would have impacted traffic. But so many states got oh, pounded yeah. with snowfall <laughs> here over the last, I think we have some video here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that system, like you said, caused problems here. Um, it was around the entire country. The first video we started out with, this was yesterday when we did get the snow. Uh, this was up in Delaware County here in central Ohio. Yeah, it's snow, but it's it's not anything that we can. And handle. we were saying that they got more snow up there because they're a little bit higher in elevation, right? Yeah. So even a few hundred feet can make that big of a difference. Oh, it, it can definitely make a difference. And, and just moving to different parts of the country definitely made a difference as well. Uh, just to our east, we actually got a bit heavier of snow. This video came in uh, from Will this morning, Friday morning in Randolph, New Jersey. This was about 630 in the morning. Uh, area got one to two and a half inches of snow. Main roads, they were fine, but look at those side streets. The back streets, yeah, they always get hit the hardest too. And, you know, I was talking to somebody who before worked for uh, ODOT. They said when they build interstate highways, they go a lot further down into the soil, which is why it takes longer for the snow to stick. But these secondary back mm -hmm. roadways, they always freeze over first. Yeah, and, and of course, traffic headaches, not just in central Ohio, but like you can see there in New Jersey this morning from the snow. But up to our northwest, a different picture here and really a, a um, is that Green Bay? Yeah, yes, that's Green, Green Bay. Bay. I wouldn't call it ominous, but just interesting. That orange glow, they were heating Lambeau Field to keep down on the snow from having to clear it off the field later. And I mean, just look at it as it pans back around to the field. That bright orange glow, that is that is an interesting sight. I wonder what you do, because you got to get rid of a couple of inches of snow. What do you do in a situation? Because it, it, I've been to Lambeau Field. They get a lot of snowfall up there. What do you do if they get a foot and you got to cover <laughs> you got you got 60,000 seats. you got to yeah. get all that snow out of there. It's just oh, amazing. You, you're just in the full manpower mode at that point. <laughs> you just got to get that snow out of there the best that you can. Um, but, you know, that's not too bad. They can handle that in Green Bay. <laughs> They're used to it out there. One final piece of video I want to share, well, some pictures here. This was over in California, whiteout conditions, a historically strong bomb cyclone came through, disabled vehicle, tipped them over. Just a crazy sight out there. And I know Dylan used to work in that part of the country. Did you ever deal with anything like I, this? I, I used to live in Oregon and we used to get a couple of bomb cyclones. What's so difficult about living out there is because you think the elevation changes here. It really doesn't compare to out there. You'll go from sea level where it's just raining and 50 degrees and then in a couple miles going uphill, you run into the snow. And these semi trucks, again, if you have a west wind and they're going north on that Interstate 5, that doesn't take a whole lot of wind to really blow them over. So in yeah. that video, you can see right there, that's crazy. Trucks being stranded, tipped over sideways. Wow. Oh, yeah. And I mean, winter storms, obviously, they can have these kind of crazy impacts, but the name kind of takes um, a lot of people uh, in on these. The people, bomb cyclone. People Sounds don't crazy. know what a bomb cyclone is, and I use that term all the time, and people don't. Yeah. It's like, what is it? So you have a little bit of a explainer. Yeah, a bomb cyclone comes along with another great word, bombogenesis, which is, of course, the <laughs> genesis of a bomb cyclone. I want to show you just exactly what those actually are. Again, we're not talking necessarily off the East Coast here, but this is the example we'll show you. Uh, basically what a bomb cyclone is, is a rapidly intensifying area of low pressure. The more of those lines, we call them isobars or areas of equal pressure, the more you get on the map, the more intense that change in pressure is and well, the stronger that low is in this scenario. The definition of a bomb cyclone or bombogenesis is a central pressure dropping by 24 millibars or more in 24 hours it can happen any time of the year, but it's more common as we get into the winter season. And well, it can result in the things that we saw out there in California, heavy rain, heavy snow and winds in excess of 70 miles per hour. Just like you were saying, Dylan, you get in those whiteout conditions and that wind pushes on the side of those semis, you tip it right over. I've lived in so many parts of the country. I've also lived in New England and that's a classic example of a nor'easter. Yeah. Like if you look at all the major snow events that hit New York City, Boston, Philadelphia, Baltimore, like that is a classic example mm -hmm. where you have the cold air on the northwest side, warm air on the southeast side, and they can get so I mean, like you think that the strongest winds happen with hurricanes and they do, but yeah. don't underestimate how strong a bomb cyclone can be. Oh yeah, I mean, we don't we're lucky here in the, the central part of the country. We're not really going to get that type of winter storm. We get the blizzards and stuff. But think of it kind of like uh, it's like a winter hurricane in a way. You've got severe thunderstorm strength winds. You've got lightning a lot of times because right. I mean the storms are strong. You got heavy snow. It's the 
worst of all worlds, I guess. All right. <laughs> so much interesting stuff going yeah. on. Well, that does it for us here on 10TV+. Plus. We have Jerry Martz here giving you your forecast tonight at 4, 5, and 6.